Hey guys, and welcome back to Carbon Scoring, your friendly neighborhood clubhouse where action figures and comic history collide. We're back down in the Secret Lounge on another shelf tour, this time checking into Stark Industries for a peek at the Iron Man Armory. We're going to dig into the comic and movie history of these different armors and reveal at the end some of the armors that should never, never be made into action figure form. So slip into your boot jets, and away we go. I have to say, there's something so satisfying about all that red and gold armor. That's why armories have been a part of both the Marvel Comic Universe and the Marvel Cinematic Universe from the beginning. And there's no better character to make all these different versions of. Because they make sense. I mean, look at some of these 90s Batman figures. Seriously, look at these. That is jet-powered Batman on skis with laser poles. But I digress. If you've watched any of my other shelf tours, you know that there's always a method to the madness, and the Armory Collection is no different. Each of the three rows has its own theme. The front row is the classics, the armors that Shellhead wore in the 60s, 70s, and the 80s. Then comes the next wave, the armors from the 90s through the new millennium. And in the back we got the big boys, the buster armors and the oversized ones that don't fit anywhere else. But let's start at the beginning with the silver and gold. Iron Man's silver armor didn't last very long. The original suit that he made with Professor Jensen only lasted one issue. But we gotta pay our respects to the armor that started it all. The gold version fared better, lasting about six months in the comics. Even though it was just a painted version of the original armor, it was what Tony was wearing when he teamed up with his super friends and earned the nickname the Golden Avenger. Then Steve Ditko, Spider-Man's co-creator, came on board with Tales of Suspense 48 and changed Iron Man's look forever. Ditko was the originator of the red and gold look, and Toy Biz included this as a variant in their very first series of Marvel Legends figures all the way back in 2002. The Ditko design had a distinctive faceplate with pointed horns, and Shell had kept this until issue 54. At that point, Jack Kirby and Don Heck perfected Iron Man's look, and it remained virtually unchanged until the mid-80s. Because of this, the classic armor gets the most love in my armory display. Here we have the first series Marvel Legends figure. He's kind of bulky, but you could actually believe that there was a guy under that suit. I love the shiny VAC metal armor Hasbro put on their two packs from 2008. And who can forget the Secret Wars Iron Man? At this point in time in the comics, it was actually James Rhodes, Rhodey, in the armor. This is my original Secret Wars figure from 1984. You can tell because I played with it so much, I wore the yellow off of his chest plate. But if there's one version that stands out from the rest, it's the Mezco 1112 Classic Armor Iron Man. Like the other figures in Mezco's line, they take some artistic license from the classic look, but it only enhances the armored appeal. It came action-packed with accessories, including multiple launching projectiles. And his center chest plate Omnibeam even lights up. We've been really lucky to get plenty of great classic Iron Man figures, but this one's truly a home run. While there was the occasional stealth armor or space armor, we didn't get a wholesale everyday change until issue 200 in November of 1985. The Silver Centurion, as this armor came to be known, was the first departure from red and gold in decades. And while we recently got a nice version of this as a Walgreens exclusive, I've decided to stick with my original Toy Biz version in my armory. The metallic red paint just pops better. But you can't keep a good color scheme down, and it wasn't long before Tony brought back the gold with the Neo Classic armor. I was heavily into the comic at this time, and my single favorite Iron Man book had Tony in this suit for issue 237. If you're wondering how far action figures have come since I started collecting, Toy Biz made this armor in their very first Marvel Universe line. Guys, we don't know how good we have it these days. Rounding out the first row is Iron Man 2020, a vision of our steampunk future, which first appeared in Machine Man No. 2 in 1984. This thing is so 80s. But how did they think we were going to fit into our flying cars in the year 2020 with those giant gears on our shoulders? tubular. The 90s and 2000s brought some pretty cool looks for Shellhead. This wasn't one of them. The modular armor debuted in issue 300 in January of 1994, and it could only get more 90s if we stuck some pouches around the belt line. I hope they paid the blind kid at the factory that painted this. And then things just went manga crazy. 
In an attempt to save their dying comics, Marvel split off the Avengers and the FF into a pocket universe, and this was the version of Iron Man who resided there. While Hasbro gave us a valiant effort at the Promethean armor in 2008, this Toy Biz figure from way back in the 90s is crazy cool, with those huge exhaust ports on the back. What can I say? The original is better. Sticking with the manga vibe, Tony wore this armor while he was out in space gallivanting around with the Guardians of the Galaxy. It was a phase. Everybody goes through it. Some of the more modern versions of the armor include the Extremist suit from the Invincible Iron Man comic, the Model 25 armor that came from the Best Defense storyline, the Bleeding Edge armor, which is one of Hasbro's best efforts, really excellent paint applications with that light blue to create the energy signature look that was featured in the book. And lastly, the Model Prime look, where somebody said, let's take everything cool about Iron Man and make it really plain and boring. But of all the Millennial armors, one stood head and shoulders above the rest. The Brian Hitch design suit from the Ultimates. Whoa, no, not that one. That one's straight garbage. This one. The Marvel Select Ultimate Iron Man from 2003. This was only the seventh figure in the Marvel Select line, and up to this point, the previous ones had been glorified statues with minimal articulation, and the articulation that they had was nonsensical. This figure showed what Marvel Select could be. Detailed, high-end collectibles from current storylines. This figure had just appeared in the books less than a year before this toy was released, and it set a new standard in sculpting and articulation. Of all of the new wave of armors, this one is clearly the best. Now let's check out some of the big guys. If you're going to take on a god, you better bring your big boy pants. So Tony based his Thorbuster armor off the Asgardian creation, the Destroyer. Unfortunately, it appears Hasbro based their Thorbuster figure off of their play school line. But thankfully, they smashed it with their Hulkbuster armors. The Marvel Legend version on the left and the Marvel Select version on the right are plastic perfection. Huge hunks of toy, worthy of taking on Marvel's mightiest foe. The Marvel Select version is a standout. Again, that red metallic paint takes this figure up a notch. But if there's one figure that I never saw coming, it was the House of M Iron Man. Coming from a three-issue miniseries that spun off of the main House of M storyline, where Scarlet Witch kinda lost it and remade reality, Toy Biz produced a four-pack of figures that included the House of M versions of Hulk, Thing, Human Torch, and Iron Man. And while the other three were cool, there was one that stood apart. For those of you who may be newer to the hobby, this was a real-life toy you could buy at Walmart in 2006. While we owe Hasbro a debt of gratitude for producing fantastic versions of character after character, Toy Biz had an adventuresome nature that you just won't find with a huge toy conglomerate. They would make the craziest figures ever, and this was the peak of it. I can't overstate the sheer scale of this thing. And usually when a company cranks out a multi-pack, it's a bunch of repainted versions of previous figures. This is an entirely new sculpt, only for this, never to be used again. So there you have it, my Iron Man armory. While it's true we didn't get versions of the Sorcerer Supreme Iron Man, or the Iron Lantern Amalgam costume, we did manage to avoid Iron Man on rocket skis. Thanks for watching, and if you enjoyed it, hit like, hit subscribe, and help us grow the channel. And check out our other shelf tour videos for more history and fun. Until next time, we'll see you on Carbon Scoring.